Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are playing, I mean not playing, I mean technically it's reaction content, so we're playing a video. We are watching the Helldivers patch notes. We already saw them once, and like, I kind of forgot that this was supposed to be a 60 day plan. I, I never saw that or read that. I just kind of looked at the weapon buffs and I was like, oh cool, for the first patch. I didn't know this was a 60 day plan, but... I'm honestly not, I'm not hating on it. I love the buffs that they did, so let's get into it. Six day update. Well, it contains um, some uh, weapons that were for forgotten before, uh, or not forgotten, we needed time. Uh, we, we took our time, uh, we did it right. We also just like looked at everyone when they played the previous patch and just like all the feedback we read so many so many posts and video uh, watched so many videos so mm, many that's good so many and you guys sent in a lot of feedback so we looked at all of that plus the stuff that we didn't get done in time and then just like we know we know what to do we know what's up so let's talk about uh, the general balancing i know that there's been uh, uh, some needed quality of life fixes uh, the helldiver armor uh, has been tweaked based on the new damages and we've made some UI updates as well. Yeah, uh, we can take the That's UI That's pretty nice. First. When you play the game, you wonder where the hell is the supply. Mm. Uh, but like, wh where is that? We marked it on the map. Uh, yeah, I, I like that because literally yesterday, um, me and my dad were just playing a match and we couldn't find any of those supplies and i and i was like man i it would be really nice if this was marked on the map and uh here we go <laughs> we finally have it but uh that would have been nice back then but uh glad that we have it now if you have also i think several at the same place they kind of stack together into one so we don't clutter everything uh same thing like where did you park your exosuit well so that that I don't feel like was too needed, but like maybe people who use exosuits more than me because I barely use exosuits. If I'm going to be really honest, I don't even use them for defense missions, honestly. But um, cool. <laughs> you can see it on the map. So, dude, where's my exosuit? Yes, awesome. Don't have to ask, to ask that question anymore. Tagging location. So let's let's talk a little bit about the uh, the Helldiver armor. Um, so we made it more or less more armor. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, we uh, we looked at um, kind of like with the damage you're taking now and how much uh, damage enemies do. do uh, we feel that the the choices was uh, sometimes too punch. I hate. Sorry, let me get a clear. I hate these things. I hate them. I wish I could just find them all, put them in a box, and then call in an orbital napalm barrage. Pushing or not rewarding enough. The heavy armor was not... We gave it more, so you get... It used to be uh, like 20% damage reduction, now it's 25. And uh, the light armor used to increase the damage taken by 33%, now it increases by 25. So the light armor is a little bit less punishing and the heavy armor is a bit more rewarding okay so it's and and for simplicity it's like 25 percent more or 25 percent less in comparison to the base armor yeah pretty much okay that's that's nice right okay let's uh let's uh, jump into some of the weapons firstly we have plasma weapons in general the projectiles and the logic that dictates like what is plasma uh, is more unified now is more of a projectile that travels fast through the air and then drops off speed fast. And for those of you that are a little bit technical, the drag coefficient of the plasma has gone up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start off with a purifier. The purifier becomes what? more of a Swiss Army knife uh, utility <laughs> plasma because you can choose kind of how you, you want to use it. You can charge it up and get a, a really big, a big boom. Or you could just click and it basically shoots like the scorcher. Or you can charge it up like halfway and it gets stronger the longer you charge it. Okay. 
You need to charge it max though to get the big explosion. Okay, so it, mm. it, it, it becomes more versatile. I will be able to deal with enemies up close using the regular single fire. Yeah, but but in that case, it, it encroaches a little bit on the scorcher. So what would the, what do we do to the scorcher to to make up for that? Ah, yes, the scorcher. Now you can. So I've not used any plasma weapons. I have two. I have the um. I have the one that they just said previous. I forgot its name. And the Plasma Punisher. I have never used them. Not a single... Well, no, I haven't. Well, actually, I did that one time. But I hated it. So... And plus, that was, I think, the Punisher? But yeah. It uh, wasn't fun. So that's why I don't use Plasma Weapons change your fire mode and it actually has automatic fire and it's in, it has an increased fire rate up to now 350 you burn through your magazine pretty fast now if you go into full auto so we give it a bigger magazine so you have 20 shots it still goes through those shots pretty fast but you have great burst fire potential mm. okay that's that's amazing and then we have the punisher plasma yeah that tell me about it yeah i'll tell you about it <laughs> tell me, tell me all about that's good it. I will, I will. So we, we reduce some recoil and increase some fire rate, but it's it, it's generally in the same space it was before. Oh. But it will act a little bit differently. It's a faster projectile that then drops off fast, uh, also much faster. Before it was, it did like the arc, mm. and now it's more. It's closer to a straight line and then drops off very quickly. Right, uh, which is nicer to use in a short range. Okay, environment. but what about Maybe the people? Like, it's like what about the people who spent time perfecting? their art game that just seems like it seems a little rude be harder to like lob over stuff but it's nicer to use when you just uh, have a close encounter. oh okay so okay, it is cool. pretty far so let's talk a little bit about it is pretty far you can see my dad uh where is it? We reduce some recoil and increase. Yeah, well, but it's it style like the. I need to get back to the. The the very. No. Uh, have close encounter. There, so you can see that it has a pretty far range. That that's pretty decent range. My dad used to use this, and he used it on bots. He kicked he kicked a lot of bots buckets um with that one. But I was just saying, like, they better not have done that, because, like, I was expecting it to go, like, here, and then, you know? Instead of all the way over there, and then, so that's good, at least. Okay, cool. So let's talk a little bit about the uh, the, the various types of uh, assault rifles, liberators, uh, educators, tenderizers, <laughs> and so forth. <laughs> Yeah, all those names, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we can start with the Penetrator. It was annoying with small magazine. You had to reload very often. That's usually when you die. And we'll die. Nah. We took it up to 45 bullets per magazine. Right. And then uh, I assume the uh, same sort of mentality that we had before of uh, whenever we give bigger magazines, we remove some of the magazines. Yeah. You still have to like look at the, the total amount of ammo you're carrying around. Um, I think in total you actually go up in ammo. I yeah. think there's more. But uh, it's nicer not to uh, reload quite as often. And then we have our dear friend the Adjudicator. Oh, I... Behind okay, this... I love this weapon. This is a certified hood classic. And I am not joking with it. This is a certified hood classic. You can kill Devis. This thing has such good penetration. Pre up, uh, pre patch, pre second patch, post first patch. Um, that you can kill a Devastator with it. Its penetration is amazing. And it's assault. It's an assault rifle. And okay, small mag, but like, it has a decent amount of mags. To be fair. To be fair. A little bit. It's still, like, a lot of people like the weapon. It is very nice. Uh, we up the damage a little bit to 90. Uh, some durable damage and slightly larger magazine. 
So it, it went up to 30 shots. Uh, we took up the tenderizer last time to 35. Oh, another reason I love it? I don't know if they showed one. So it, Right there. Those little... Those guys are so annoying because they're like, Hey, you want to attack me after hitting my shield with exactly one bullet? Then I'm going to go full shield mode, and you can't do crap about it. But now with the educator, I can just go, Yeah, I can. Bang, 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 bang. Now, sure, it did give me white tracers, but still pretty decent. It went up to 30 shots. Uh, we took up the tenderizer last time to 35, and then like I felt like the difference though was too big. The tenderizer can now vary I've, its fire. I have not used this. I don't have a lot of war bonds, so I'm gonna a lot of these. I'm gonna be like, I don't have this. I can't tell you anything about this. Um, but I only have like what five, six war bonds out of however many there are. Rate up to 850. I still have like Which, three to for go. Those who know? Who know? So the tenderizer, it, it it has gotten the same functionality as well, the that's a lot of the things. The rate of fire. Yeah. That was a very important. Like we yeah. we discussed the tenderizer at great lengths. Like why did it have 600 rate, uh, RPM when it should have had 850? Yeah. So now you can at least make that choice and live the dream you always wanted. That seems very nice. Across the board, uh, all of the assault rifles have become a little bit easier to control as well. I think for most of them at least. We reduced the hor horizontal recoil a little bit. Like it's, We, we want to keep the recoil to go going up. It's easier to compensate for, but the horizontal recoil sometimes... Nah, it, ma it made it uh, cumbersome to use sometimes. Mm. Let's talk about the biggest change of all the primer weapons. <laughs> it's the Dominator. I love the Dominator. Tell me, what has happened? Okay, I've not used the Dominator before, even though I have Steeled Veterans because I have the, um, not digital, I have the DLC to Helldivers and I unlock the whole Steeled Veterans thing. I have not used this thing once, but my dad is like, it's amazing on bugs, and I'm like, okay, I should probably use this, proceeds to bring... Um, the spray and pray. Into the dominator. Um, why was it in the explosive category? It's not anymore. So now in the UI, I can find it under special weapon. Yeah, it literally says in the description it's not explosive. It it doesn't say that it's not explosive, but it kind of indirectly does. It says jet propelled rounds which doesn't mean explosive i don't know why they put it in explosive weapons yeah finally finally yeah, yeah. fix the game yeah <laughs> then and there ba it was basically uh, unplayable before yeah i don't know like, like <laughs> anyway okay oh, so okay let's go sidearms right yep yeah, let's look at the let's look at the sidearms yeah you guys comment online <gasps> saying like okay i have the stim pistol in my loadout this better be good, or I'm coming for their throats. Like the stim pistol, it's hard to hit, and there's some shenanigans. Yeah, yeah, like I can shoot like three things while I'm trying to hit my dad because we're gonna run off to an objective, and I'm like, dude, hold still, I need to shoot you with this stim. <laughs> and the worst part, the thing I don't like about it is that it's like, you only get 75% of the stim, rather than an actual stim. Like, why call it the stim pistol? Just call it the baby stim pistol, I don't know. What's going on with it, where you aim at your friend, you shoot, but you don't hit. What's going on? For some reason, it had a lot of spread. Oh yeah, I also get the thing where it's just like, I shoot, like, pretty good. I get like a decent shot on somebody that I... That looks like it should hit. I, I I think it should hit, but then it just doesn't. It kind of just doesn't. Yeah, and I I'm not sure exactly why we did that, but uh, we fixed it. So it went from uh, we cut it down to like fifteen percent of spread. So you you'll hit what you're actually trying to hit. But also, oh that's uh, good. One of the things that we realized is that. It basically had a muscle uh, velocity of a soft air gun. Now it's uh, 200 meters per second, up from 80. It does actually matter. 
for you to expect. Okay, I'm glad that they did that because I'm, I know what that means finally. I only checked two of the things in the patch notes and that was the rover section and the stim pistol. I checked nothing else, but that's good because in the description of the stim pistol, it literally says ballistic. Like, if these are supposed to be ballistic, then they better be going that fast. <laughs> Especially if your friends are moving and you're trying to hit them. I need stem! Okay, let's talk about the big boys in the sidearm category. The Verdict and the Senator. The Verdict, it is a big boy. So it has AP3. It went up to medium arm and penetration, and uh, it went up in... It did a bit more stagger, more durable damage. That's good. That's good, because the, the main reason I didn't get the Polar Patriots thing yet is because I didn't really, th like, the weapons were okay, but the only reason I didn't get them is because they had such low armor penetration, but f from what I'm seeing now, I'm going to get the Polar Patriots next, because um, I saw, uh, I forget what the name is, but the first pistol you get... When I looked in Polar Patriots and I saw light, I'm like, why would I even use this? Is this just like using the first stim, like not, why did I say stim pistol? This is like using the first pistol you get in Helldivers. Like it's light armor penetration. Why am I using this? Well, why should I use this actually? Cause I haven't bought the war bond. But then was like, and now it's going kind of in the space of the senator. And the senator is a bigger boy. Oh. This. This is a hood classic as well. That that one is a hood classic. So. In my loadout that I did for bots a bit ago. I had MP98 Knight. Senator. Because. Um, MP98 Knight can't hit through. Um, devastators. Right? Solution. Bang, bang, bang with the Senator. It's also a fix. Like, they one-shot automatons if you hit it on their body or head. It doesn't do it on their... If you hit their arms, though. So, that's also... I also just kind of just shot down a lot of automatons if my knight was out of mags. Very good. So, let's just take it up to... Armor penetration four, like an auto cannon. So I can I can headshot chargers. Yeah. What? Are you telling me that not a primary, not a primary, a secondary has the equivalent armor penetration? Of an auto kit. That's fucking amazing. And we also gave it more damage. And like the double. This was already a hood classic. This was already a hood classic. It is now earned that spot on the higher podium. It has made it to the Gun Olympics and is on that podium on the skyscraper. Not two, not three, it's way above them. It's on that one, up there. Double the durable damage. So it's, it's a big iron on your hip. The grenades, high explosive frag and see. What? I mean, I, I'm not trying to say that's bad, but like, that's crazy. That's crazy good. behind the curve. Yeah, they weren't used that much, so we just said like, um, all right, if we basically double the damage, um... Yeah, that was my main, main bickering with the, uh, thermite grenade, is that when you throw it, the, f like, the fire... It's... Yeah, bad. Most of the it was bad. It was bad. Yeah, maybe, maybe you'll like him. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> that'll do it. <laughs> you have an expectation of what an explosion, depending on how big it is and like how big of a oh, the, that's the, the frag. charge is in it. Oh. So like, what should that do? If it's 
if it differs too much, it becomes sort of like a gamey balance thing instead of just like uh, explosion. Hold up, water break. Explosions being very satisfying. Yeah, <coughs> and that's the that's the all, the whole point of explosions is satisfaction. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's <laughs> the, that's why the military invented explosions. So let's talk about one of my favorite throwables, the throwing knives. And if you can throw more of them, you have more fun. So we just gave. Are you about to tell me that they're gonna like double this? Ima imagine they like quintuple it. <laughs> no, like triple it would be more realistic. Give you more. So tell me, Nicholas, how many more? Twelve more, so you have twenty. Okay, that's, a, that's, a, that's an increase by an unfathomable amount of percent. <laughs> we can't math that high. <laughs> no, exactly. Ma math doesn't go that high. <laughs> no, <laughs> only it. knife does. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so and that means that I'll have more knives than I have in my in my cupboard at home. Yeah, we we need to talk about that though. Like we need to update your kitchen. He needs more th throwing knives. Give him like five shurikens. I need more knives. Is yes. what you're saying. <laughs> then he Let's probably should be good. Yeah. So I said that we're never ever gonna change the autocannon. The autocannon is a staple <laughs> of what the support weapons of Helldivers is. And if, if we ever do change it, know that both of us are probably dead. <laughs> or kidnapped. Yeah. But we changed the autocannon. We changed the autocannon. And hear us out, <laughs> before you freak out. <laughs> it's one of our favorites. This is a reintroduction of an unfinished system that we had in the game. Yeah. Or actually, a finished. Sorry, I made that joke because he was doing the I would probably be dead thing. I That was a bad joke. <laughs> System that we have in the game and <laughs> that we never use. Works. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so there was uh, we had a function to um, for programmable ammo. So you could change uh, how the projectile acts and Okay, please somebody tell me what that means. I have no idea what flak or affet me. I mean, okay, maybe affet means it focuses on armor penetration. But what does flak mean? Does it just does it shoot a stratagem instead of an auto cannon round that just makes the eagle ram into the ground for you and then just go in reverse, fly back up? Just at the click of a button. So we introduced. Flak to the autocannon. Cool. So the so the uh, the autocannon rounds can now have dual function. So you can you can tweak them from being as they were to that kind of flak. So what does the flak that round do? A uh, proximity uh, round that has a big uh, shrapnel explosion. It's very nice. Like shooting down flyers, streakers, gunships, all of that. Like against the bugs. Like ah, oh, here's a lot of stuff. You just like spray it with flak and everything dies. I don't know, for me it's just like... So... You know what I see that being used for, probably? Is if, like, you have some medium-sized enemies, you know? You switch into flak mode, and then you just start bam, bam, bam. And, and, since, and it'll be crowd control, because... I don't know if you can see it, but there's, like, shrapnel going, going everywhere over there right above from where he shot, so the shrapnel will help take out other I've bugs been as well. so much fun with it. Programmable ammo is something that we talked about so much when, when we were making this game, of like, how cool would it not be to be able to swap the functionality of the weapon, and, and that's why it's yeah. called the weapon functionality, um, and, and allow you to tailor the experience. But it also, it allows for depth for players to uh, master the weapons that they are already familiar with. So all the pro autocannon players out there, you will now have another uh, yeah. layer of depth associated with the autocannon. Recoilless rifle. Yes. Has Wait, no, no way they did that. Dude, I'm saying this thing can like one shot bio titans on difficulty 10 if you do it right. And it's not even that hard to do. Aim for the head. That's all you need to do, and you can one-shot them with the f rifle. So, received programmable ammo. Yeah, because 
wouldn't you want that thing that fires a really strong projectile to also blow up more stuff? Mm. Uh, if I could, yes, please. Yes. And now Wait, you can. what? You're welcome. Are they? So you can pro. Uh, are they adding bigger explosion distance now? So program it to uh, normally you have the height. Programmable ammo. They just they just did programmable ammo. Explosive anti tank round. Mm. The heat. heat. Exactly. Now you have the AT round, the high explosive round, which is just a bigger, super satisfying explosion. So you just like flip the button, no anti tank. Boom. Dude, that's so good because you get the high. It's basically like if you just take a high explosive and a. Uh, oh, sorry, camera reverse. Um, there you go. There's a little uh, grenade in there. That's that's amazing. It's like shooting grenades at them, and the and the best part is it's like an impact grenade. Oh. So so the both the auto cannon and the recoilless rifle will using the programmable ammo have more versatility, allow for deeper engagement and deeper play, um, and also be a little bit more versatile in the roles. Yeah. One of the nicest changes here well, is, the, is to the for a second, For a second, my brain just kind of went, whoa, because it's it's expecting a whoa kind of thing, but, uh, yeah, stall... Who uses a stalwart? Like, I don't. Am I missing out on something? I don't use a stalwart. I'm pretty sure only, like, noobs use that. I, I, I could be wrong, but, like, isn't that the weapon noobs use? Because I remember... I'm using it when I was a noob, but I don't know. Uh, where its ergo has gone up. Yeah, it was... It's it what? Ergo has gone up. Changes here is the, uh, to the stalwart. Uh, where its ergo... Nicest changes Hold here up. is the, uh, to the stalwart. Uh, where its ergo has gone up. Yeah, it was... It had ergonomics that was like it was a bit oh, clunky to er handle, a bit too ergonomics. That's what he means by ergo. Much for a weapon of actually that size and agility. So just like, no, you you take it to kill stuff like hunters, uh, etc. But if you're too slow to turn, it's annoying. Yeah. So it has better better ergonomics. Uh, but speaking of machine guns and. Uh, you know, when you get that feeling of like, you're in a game, you're shooting stuff, and you just realize... HMG? Okay, I'm happy about that. The one bickering I have with it... How are you gonna call it a heavy machine gun? If an SMG is faster than... I I'm just saying, the MP98 Knight is faster than the heavy machine gun. I, I, I'm pretty sure. I think if I remember correctly, doesn't it have like a max of 950? And the uh, knight has like 1,300. But a uh, big, ra big round difference. Like this has way more rounds than, um, and also harder heavy hitting rounds than the MP98 knight. So like 400 less firepower, like fire rate is honestly a better trade off. Enough DACA. Mm. You're re there, ready to reach the climax, and then it's just 24, 25 rounds missing. Yeah, it's like you run out of ammo and have to reload a little bit too fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you don't want to finish uh, too uh, fast. No, I, and I know all about that. <laughs> anyway, 25 more bullets. Okay, so, so the, sort of a normal machine gun, and 25 more bullets in each magazine of the heavy machine gun. Okay, so both the, nice. both the machine gun and the heavy machine gun has gotten, gotten an increase of 25 bullets more. Yeah. So it's 175 normal machine gun and 100 for the heavy machine gun. The normal machine gun also gets one more magazine uh, at start when you, when you drop it in. So you can shoot more. So uh, this should put the machine guns in that role of, of uh, fire support, suppressive fire and just laying down volumes of fire. I just want my character to laugh more mm. when I'm shooting. Sound decision making. That's how we do it. Let's talk about backpacks. Yeah. Let's talk about the jump pack first. For a while, the players got to enjoy the um, dark fluid pack. Yeah. And it jumped higher 
better, more. Now, the jump pack, I think the values are basically the same. So mm. you, you jump, uh, your thrust force uh, and the, uh, has increased, your vector, you go a little bit more forward. I'm so used to the old one that that looks like boom! <laughs> like, it, it, it looks way too big. Uh, so you can use it more to dodge stuff and also to travel. And you can y jump more often. Uh, we lowered it from 20 to 15 seconds. Okay, so it means that if I want to be... Oh, that's so nice! The recon guy that has the jump pack and the uh, marksman rifle, I can just pounce ahead of the group, get into a good scouting position, and then, then uh, lay down fire or report on what's going on. Drones. Uh, some really cool updates to the drones. Uh, yet an additional mechanical... Everything but the mach but the that little stupid little machine gun drone is amazing. Everything but that one machine gun drone is perfect. And if they're buffing them, buffing all drones, then I Doing that, my Google alarm goes off. Feature in the game, so, uh, and I love new mechanics. Well, yeah, we we love new mechanics. We've added a couple. So, um, there's a toggle function now. So, with your backpack fun function, you can recall and like let out your drone. So, uh, if you want to, I like that, but I have the dog breath. Um, I have the dog breath one. So I need to know, does it restock it or no? Because if it does, it's very good. Because like sometimes in between fights, it's at like one gas left. And then it just like goes up to an enemy. It doesn't even spray gas. And then it's just like, okay, I need to restock. <laughs> sneak past something. I mean, how often didn't you want to sneak before? And your drone, drone just, it just started blasting, mm -hmm. right? And now you, you can recall it. You have that skill factor now. You can choose when to waste its ammo or when to sneak. And like you have tactical choices with your drone backpack. Yeah. So previously I had the uh, drone flying out and it, a charger appeared and it would waste all its ammo on the charger. I can now just tell, tell it to just sit the f down. Yes. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the guard dog. <laughs> the, the regular guard dog. <laughs> the regular guard dog. That's just mostly outshined by its cooler cousin. So <laughs> we g just gave it basically a liberator penetrator instead. So it, it has. It, it previously had a, a liberator. Yeah. So we Still gave it. Still not good. <laughs> increased armor penetration. I mean, like, okay, better armor penetration. Uh, like, that's. <laughs> 50% star bigger mag. And now it just shoots more, shoots better. And. Uh, with the, the added functionality, it's just it's just nice, and it has a lot of burst damage. And uh, the AP actually it matters a lot because especially against bots where you because it tried to target the chest of a devastator that mm. has armor three, and uh, it would just waste all of its bullets normally. Right now it just kills it. That's cool. Surprisingly fast. We saw that a lot of you use the uh, shield generator backpack exclusively it was overrepresented so instead of doing anything to the shield generator backpack we're trying to ensure that the jump pack the guard dogs uh, the drone backpack the support weapon backpacks they get a little bit more powerful uh, to even out the, the the choice and make the choice more complicated Okay, so let's just generally talk about all of the sentries. So we reduce cooldown on most of them, not on the mortars, but everything else, I think. So auto cannon, rockets, uh, gatling, and machine gun. Dude, <coughs> one gatling, legendary sentry. It wor it works both on bots and bugs, and now bots on the lower levels because you know. Once there's hulks and tanks, you're you're cooked. But like, um, that's like there was only a two minute cooldown. There was only a two minute cooldown.
down on the Gatling Sentry. That's... I I'm not complaining. Give me my... I am not complaining. But, like... Uh, we shaved off, like, a solid uh, 30 seconds of the cooldown of all of them. Uh, Minute and 30 seconds now. And uh, we gave them uh, the machine gun and Gatling more ammo. And that together with... The, the upgrade for 50% more ammo, they have a lot of ammo. Uh, let's quickly... I used move. to get 24 bug kills before it had to go. I want to see how much it is now, post-update. Move over to the mines. So, anti-tank mines. Uh, the biggest change that we've done to them is what they're triggered by. Yes, <laughs> what they're triggered by. <laughs> they get very triggered by large things. <laughs> 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 but not small <laughs> things. No, they won't get triggered by hell divers or smaller enemies. It will be chargers, by titans, impalers, hawks, tanks. Does that make sense? Oh. Well, yeah, that, that that that's good because like you don't want to have a little guy walk up there and be like, oh, what's it? <laughs> like that's just wasting the mine at that point. Actually, try this too. Oh. Mm. One uh, strategy I'm that. I see the community taking once yeah. and then abandoning it. It's the Tesla power. Uh, yeah. But it sucks. Like, it's like once once it's like targeted an enemy, it waits five seconds to shoot. It's like, hmm, do you really want to die today, sir? Do you truly want to die? Hmm. Let me ponder that. Okay, other Kazam. Now it's it's full Chad. <laughs> oh and really? Uh, yeah, I didn't think it would be, but uh, I noticed that it was when I tested it. Uh, we just reduced the charge up cooldown between shots from like three seconds to one second, so it shoots a lot more. Uh, the cooldown also shaved off the. That's what I was just old grandpa yelling at clouds about. Yes. Three seconds, like the other sentries. Ah, it's the, it's the biggest thing. Like, I, I, I hardly can't play without this against the boss now, because it, it's just so nice. It's the, the shield generator relay. It used to be this small... <sighs> the one bickering I had with this... Why does it have to go away when it takes damage? It is a generator... I, I don't, th and plus, if it does, then you're screwed because you don't get another one for a minute. Like, just don't have it do that. It's a, and unlike a backpack, this thing is like much bigger. It is, de it's like an industrial version. So why does it have to decrease charge? because of like rockets like it should it, it, it it's stronger than a ba shield backpack All bubble and it broke very easily so we just increased the size many times it, it you can cover a decent area you can cover like an extraction zone uh that comes though with that eventually the enemies will actually pass into the bubble and then you're not as protected but you have a big bubble and it uh, like regenerates its health all the time so you actually have to like overpower it so you'll also notice like if it's stray shots here and there the shield won't care it will just like man up and take it uh. Hallelujah. oh I accidentally muted it everything it's like a whole army shooting at it eventually then it will break but but really what happens is uh, then is if I get pushed out of the shield, and it's a large, rather large area, the enemies enter it, I get push, pushed out of the shield. The... Now they have a shield. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, yeah. you win some, you lose some. Yeah. <laughs> so, let's get, uh, get into more of the, like, the gameplay and the enemies, shall we? Yeah, absolutely. And the first thing that we need to talk about is patrols and how patrols now act. So, it used to be 
that when you did the mission, when it was mission complete, you can go, now go to extraction. Some players did the mission first, and then they went like, let's collect samples, let's do other ob uh, optional objectives, etc. And what the game did was, oh, mission complete, let's just super jack up the amount of patrols. Like mm. patrol spawning became very intense. So then you just had a continuous, long, like adrenaline intense experience that also kind of, like it's tiring to do that for a long time. So, and you want to do ups and downs in the gameplay. Two words. Gatling Sentry. Like increased ammo, reduced cooldown. You need like two of those and they will overpower every single bug that's there. So what we did instead was that when you mission is complete, you can go through extraction and around the extraction, as you get closer to extraction, the enemy presence will go up, you will get more patrols and you, you'll get an intense extraction experience that will try and... Okay, that's good. That's good, I think if, so yeah, that means that It'll also go down when you leave. Because that would have been so annoying. If you had like 500,000 bugs. Not only would it lag you, but like, that's just then impossible to extract. Stop you from leaving. But if you don't go directly to the extraction, you will still have like the, our normal pacing of the mission. Because mm. that makes more sense. And I think a lot of players, like when we listen to what you guys are saying, as like, depending on how you play, and maybe some of you haven't like really reacted to it, you just play, and then you know it's like, oh, there's so many patrols, and like it's so intense, and it's like sometimes unrelenting. And we think that this have contributed a lot to that, because it's also like, it's not a telegraph mechanic, so not everyone knows that it, that it exists, and now it will, it will make more sense. Um, and you'll get more freedom and player agency to play a bit more how you want to, mm. which is important. Right, so, Terminates, yeah. Not that many changes, they're pretty Why do they just show automatons and they say, right, so, Terminates. <laughs> as they are yeah they're pretty good and uh, like what is the most annoying enemy of the termites impaler no wrong he is so wrong hunter i think they're called hunters but it's those little green guys who leap at you i wish i could pick everyone up stuff them in a little cage and throw an orbital napalm barrage in there and then throw three <laughs> napalm eagles at that cage <laughs> no the hunter uh, <laughs> my mistake <laughs> yeah. it's jump ability when it pounces on you you could have 10 of them doing it at the, s at the same time so we did like a small area cooldown so they can pounce now and then so you usually get one after the other good but you don't get like everyone at the same time right so you get, don't get that burst damage of four hunters hitting you at the same time in the head yeah pretty much uh, let's dive into the automatons the bots yes uh so th the targeting mechanic of, of the bots is of course one of the core components to how the bots are to fight like how how good are they at aiming how fast do they aim how accurately do they shoot yeah and what do they see yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we did a couple of things. We noticed uh, there were inconsistencies. There's, there's a lot of lines of script with this. And we noticed that some enemies actually didn't care about line of sight when they shot. Mm. So, so, so in, in what situations would this have happened? If you would pop down smoke, there was like a third of the enemies just like don't care. And this also happened with if they had a wall in front of them, they just don't care, shooting into the wall. And if they actually poke through the wall, for some clipping reasons, they will also fire through the wall. Mm. Like, how many people have gotten killed by a scout strider shooting through a rock? We have fixed a lot of the feels bad moments of uh, bot targeting. When you get fired upon and then you run behind a rock or a wall, they will actually lose, 
lose to you as a target. Like all of them, really. Previously, it was like two thirds of them did, but not all of them. And they kept firing, and then when you maybe yes. ran out again, they would already have aimed. Oh, they they okay. aim, aim like centered on you and just hit you instantly. Now they have to retarget you, and it takes for them a, a, a while to get like the rifle up, etc. Talk about the Hulk Bruiser. Yeah, let's Hulk out. Uh, so it got its rocket launcher back. We basically moved back from the change that we did last time based on community feedback. Yeah. Keep the feedback coming. If, if you don't like that change either, like we'll, I guess we'll do another pass on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, we're okay with going a bit of back and forth as long as we get there in the end. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the community. I feel like the rocket launcher does need to be slower. Like, not, it doesn't need to not be there, but it needs to be slower. Because, like, the problem my face, I take a ballistic shield. I hold it up in front of my face, and it's just, like, my ballistic shield is dead by the time it finishes its rocket barrage at me. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do? I just get ragdolled into oblivion whenever I try and attack this. They have to make it fire, like, pew, pew. Pew with the rockets, you know? Like, those are rockets. <laughs> I understand if it's like a rocket devastator, that's a different story. They are rocket devastators and weaker, not a Hulk. <laughs> you know, I've uh, been talking about the heavy devastator and the fact that it's relentless in, in, in the way that it shoots at you. Yeah. So we, we made it pause a little bit between each time it shoots. So before it was almost like a continuous just like shooting uh, but we need to give the players a small window so they can pop up uh, behind cover or like do something against them uh, so it gives you a slot uh, like a small window of opportunity okay let's talk about tanks and uh, tank turrets we we did increase the the front armor of tanks uh last patch and uh, it got weird interactions with like a railgun that then suddenly now started to bounce. So we reduced the front armor back to, to five like the rest of the tank. We also got to, and this is basically for all tanks, we missed a bit, a bit of things with how much health their weak spots had, like the backside of the turrets, etc. So we wanted it to still be roughly as it was before the last patch in terms of like how advantageous it is to the player to get up behind the tank. Um, so we fixed that. Somebody tweeted at me or something ab around the barrager. Like they, they dropped a 500 kilo eagle bomb that hit the rocket ramp of the barrager and it didn't die, which seems strange to me. Yeah, it's fixed. Uh, wh when it dies now, it fully dies. Uh, and you won't drop 500 kilos on it and it still kills you. Did anybody else catch that? That! That is a tank barrel. That's a tank barrel. Ex excuse me. That is a tank barrel. That's like the that's like the tank rifle barrel. Excuse me, but where did that come from? Thank you, everybody, uh, for uh, joining in on, uh, on this wonderful conversation between me and Niklas. It was a very in-depth, professionally executed uh, conversation. We had a lot of fun. Hope you did as well. Uh, if you want to read more about the patch notes, you can find them on Steam and on PlayStation.com. Well, that's good. And we'll see you on the battlefield. <laughs> <laughs>
more, I mean, <laughs> hit the notification bell if you want to get notified about our videos. And uh, hit us up in the comments if you want to talk to us or maybe somebody else in the comments or want to know something. But for now, I shall see you next. Wait, don't forget to tell me. Wait, never mind, actually. I will see thy on the other side of the flipped object.